Hello and welcome to our collection, or I say welcome back. Um, some of the cars aren't here, but most of them are. Most of them are, so I'm just gonna take you through some of them. Some of them? Some, some wasp! You know what? Let's just get started. I'm gonna talk to you about the cars. Some of you guys have been asking on the YouTube comments. Um, this is our wonderful family car, BMW i7. It's fully electric, it's the only electric car in the fleet. We have it to like ferry our son around and do like family stuff. My wife and I went on a date in this car. We basically went to a pizza place where you couldn't eat in. We just ate pizza in the back of the car. And because there's a TV in the back, we just ate pizza and watched it. So let me show you around this wonderful machine. It's kind of like an, an, a massive like obelisk. It's just a, a black slab. The interior is pretty cool. You have automatic doors, these super comfortable seats. Um, my detailers detailing thing in case you want a car detailed. Um, yeah, the car's amazing. The dash is amazing. It's a comfortable ride, but the magic happens in the back of the car. So if I press this button here, let the door open. It normally opens more than that. It must've thought I was going to hit it. Anyway, this is the back of the car. Um, it's a bit dirty at the moment, so ignore that. My son, likes to eat baby crisp things and his isofix seat thing is, how do you? Yes, I'm an expert. But yeah, in the back of the car, as you can see, I have tons of headroom, tons of leg room. Um, not that my son needs it, but when I, for example, go on dates with my wife, what I can do is put the car into like theater mode and the screen drops down, but it's not gonna drop down because my seat's in comfort entry mode. So give me one second. <laughs> Hello again, I'm just adjusting my front seat so I could drop the TV at the back. So yeah, if I click here, uh, theater mode is somewhere, there we go. If I click, if I click there, or you have touch pads as a passenger as well, and click theater mode, what it does is it raises all the blinds of the car, drops down a 31 inch 8K display, and I can sit here and enjoy TV in absolute bliss. Um, there's nothing 8K to watch though, so that kind of sucks. Um, and it gets used so rarely, but it's pretty cool. It has a camera on it, and I've just noticed, why does it have a camera on it? That is kind of sus, BMW. But also, if you sit on this side of the car, and you go into your uh, seat mode, you can put the car into like a lay flat mode, so I can go into like, almost like first class aeroplane mode. It drops the seat in front of me, it reclines my seat, activates a massage, and I can literally lay flat. It, it takes a little while, so we're gonna be here for a second. I can watch things on Amazon and ye old YouTube, which is cool, which is what you're on now. So it's like YouTube inception. It takes, it takes a little while, not everything's instant. Oh, here we go, here we go, legs up. This looks a lot more strange without context. So yeah, that's it. Uh, you have this laid back um, seating position. You can watch your YouTube, watch your videos. It's uber comfortable back here and the ride quality is amazing. I've got a body kit for this car, by the way. So I got a body kit from a company called Maxton, I need to put it on the car. I just haven't got around to doing it yet. But for now, this is the BMW i7. I am gonna tell you what I love and hate about each car. So the BMW i7, the, the thing I love about it is the comfort. The thing I hate about it is if you come over here and you take a little spin, this angle isn't great. Um, here we have what is, um, the jewel of the fleet. This is my first car, my Lexus IS250 that I still own. As you can see, it's in tip top condition, apart from the rust, the insects, the moss, and the damaged wheels. So basically what happened is I had this car um, as my first car. I drove it for two years. Then I gave it to my older sister to drive as her first car. And I got another car. And she kind of, um, I would say, didn't take care of it, but I think that's very light. She abused it. She, she really rough handled this car. So I'm bringing it back to life. That's the whole thing that's happening. I think what's gonna happen first or next is um, the car's gonna get taken away. The body's gonna get redone, refurbished, repainted, and it's gonna come back. And I'm gonna to, um, wrap it a really cool color, put some nice big rims on it and do the interior. So it feels a bit more modern. I'm not gonna do much engine stuff in it because the engine in, in these cars, the ECUs are encoded. So you can't actually modify that much and it's naturally aspirated. But it's a cool looking car, still runs, and it has sentimental value to me. So there's not much to go through in this car. The one thing I love about this car is that the build quality is stupendous. The one thing I hate about it is that I gave it to my sister and she ruined it. Um, you're probably thinking, why is this massive gray elephant car thing behind you? It is an Aston Martin DBX 707. Um, ironically, out of all the cars here, this one actually isn't, uh, isn't mine. It's actually a courtesy car whilst they repair my wife's G-Wagon. 
uh, I'll still take you around it. It's a pretty cool car. Although, see, in the UK, when you have 24 on the plate, that means the year of manufacture. So you can have 24, and then the alternate with the later half of the year will be 74, right? So this car is literally brand new because it's 2024. Tell me why the air conditioning system doesn't work. What's going on, Aston? Uh, so if you come around here, it is the DBX 707, the world's fastest SUV. I'm not sure if it still has that title. I feel like a lot of companies have claimed that. Um, it's cool, it has the frameless doors, so it's very coupey. The interior is nice, but the infotainment is old as hell. So basically, it has the same infotainment in the G-Wagon. Oh my gosh, it is hot in here. Um, so no touch screen, all you have is um, vibes and this spin wheel from Mercedes of 2012. Uh, it's a cool car, it just doesn't, I don't know, the, the amount this car costs, I'm not sure if it, uh, if it justifies that. One thing that is really cool about the 707 though is that compared to the regular DBX, they fitted a wet clutch, so um, it's a bit more snappy when you change gears. It's still a uh, torque converter gearbox, but yeah, wet clutch this time for people that like wet clutches. Uh, one thing I hate about this car is the fact that the infotainment sucks. And one thing I like about this car is the fact that it's not mine. If you come around here now, we have the wonderful, seen before on this channel, BMW M3 Touring. Uh, this car has surprised me. I was a certified BMW hater. Like, I would wake up and just hate BMWs. Everything about them, the indicators, the way they look, the way they sound, the w everything, I hadn't driven one at this point. But um, I've driven many BMWs now and I've fallen in love with the company after buying the i7, which is honestly one of my favorite Favorite cars of all time as an all-round car um, I thought you know what let me uh people will be basically people will believe me saying yo you have to try a real M car and I tried one and I love it so here is uh, the M3 Touring in this wonderful um, satin blue color it's a great car it handles well it looks good I've done a whole video on it so I'm not going to go over all of it again um, the design of it this front end when BMW first announced it they got mocked for it but um, now, oh, it's hot. Now that it's my car, I realized uh, I love it. Uh, it suits the M3 Touring massively. Um, one thing I love about this car is the fact that it's like a practical performance car. Drives well, sounds nice. It's all round as performance car is good. Uh, one thing I hate about this car is that you can't get it with a panoramic sunroof and you can't get it with a carbon roof like on other M cars. Um, also, unrelated, I have very sensitive eyes. Um, so the doctor told me I need to wear sunshades when I'm in the sun or else I'll get headaches, which I get a lot. So got my shades on. Uh, next to it, we have a car that's got more horsepower than this BMW and that BMW combined. It is my wonderful uh, Ferrari SF90 with 1,000 horsepowers wrapped in this wonderful bluey, goldy color shift color. Um, it's actually a Rosso Corsa car, so resale red, the basic Ferrari red. Uh, I'm not a massive fan of that color, so I thought I'll switch it up. So I've had it in this for about three months. I think I'm gonna take it back now though, because I've got a blue car and I don't need two blue cars. In the same fleet, this car is amazing. You probably saw it in my car wow video where I was drag racing it, and it um, kind of beat the Rualto in a drag race, but what do you expect? It weighs 200 kilograms less than a Rualto, so that was um, always gonna happen. Uh, it's a great car, it's comfortable, practical performance. It has no fuel in. That's not straight. I think that's good enough. So there's no fuel in the SF90. Gear changes are mad sluggish. Are we gonna make it to the petrol station? <laughs> oh my God. Why is there a line to get into the petrol station? I wasn't nervous, I wasn't worried. Not a worry in the world. That rough idol. Rough idol hits hard. Basically after the car wash drag race, it ran out of fuel. I put it on the transport, they brought it back here and I just didn't put fuel back in it. So um, yeah, that was a close call. Uh, it's got hybrid motors as well. So two on the front axle, one on the rear gearbox, allowing you to have hybrid assist and fully electric mode. Uh, combined horsepower of the car, again, 1000 horsepower or 986 they say. Uh, it's a great looking car, it drives well. I feel like this car's underrated a lot of people um, talk down on the SF90. One thing I love about the SF90 is that it's super usable, so I can actually take it to go get food from the shop or I can take it on a track and it will just kill it. It's basically like Ferrari's version of the Turbo S, lightning fast and perfection. They didn't chase emotion here, they chased performance and usability, which I love. One thing I hate about this car though, it is freaking expensive. And because not many people bought it, the values do this a lot. So it's a, it's a very troublesome car to own in terms of values. I got it at a good price. I feel sorry for everyone paying 500K for one. That is brutal, that is painful. Uh, next to it, we have the wonderful Porsche GT3 RS, which I hope you saw the video of. If you didn't see the video of, click somewhere. I'll try and remember to do it. 
click somewhere, maybe there. Um, yeah, it's, this car is out of this world. Since that video, I took on a drive in my car club. I have a car club called Hunter Auto Society. Uh, link below in the description thing. Anyway, we took it for a drive, or I took it for a drive. I was followed by a Pista, a 720S, a bunch of other cars. This car is out of this world. Even though I can't use the maximum performance yet because it's not run in, so I can only use uh, five to 6,000 RPM. Uh, I've done only 600 miles at this point, or 700. Um, you can't actually use the full rev range until you've done 900. But anyway, uh, I can't even use full performance, but everyone was struggling to keep up just because through the corners, this car would destroy anything. It just felt like there was unlimited grip. There wasn't a moment when I drove it the last weekend where it felt sketch. It was just perfect the entire time. So I love it. It's uh, an amazing looking car. And I understand the performance. People say it's overhyped and it's probably because they haven't driven one and they spend too much time on like Instagram and TikTok. But yeah, GT3 RS, amazing. Um, when every time I say GT3 RS, I have to remember Visac pack. It's, it's a thing, in white. Visac pack in white, yeah. But uh, yeah, one thing I love about this car, the way it drives. One thing I hate about this car, the way it drives. Um, I'll explain that with, it's great as a performance car to do performance things. If I want to go get a drink, it's not that great. Like, well, I say drink. I don't actually drink alcohol. When I say drink, I mean like, a non-alcoholic beverage. So if I go and take it into like London or something, um, it's very firm, but I love it still. And next to it, we have the Green Goblin um, here. This is <clears throat> my Aventador SVJ. As of all the cars here, I've had this the longest, bar the, the Lexus IS 250. Um, this is my baby gal, this is my doll. Uh, we've been through many things together and I am very proud of her. One of 900 in the world, so they say. Uh, it's got the amazing Lamborghini updoors. I've done gumball with it. I've taken it on many drives, taken it on track, taken it to get food, taken it to get a drink. So yeah, this car is just out this way. <clears throat> Dry throat. This car is just out of this world, honestly. It's one car, ooh. V8, my neighbor's got a Maserati or something. Um, yeah, out of all the cars, this one has the most emotional impact for me. Uh, I don't think I'll ever sell it. It's just everything you expect it to be is what it is. It's compromised, but in the most exciting ways. It drives like a dog sometimes. At slow speed, it's terrible. Gearbox is slushy. Um, it's, it's just an old car, but I love it. Um, it's got a Gentani exhaust, which sounds great. You probably heard it when I was rubbing it out um, of the garage, but I don't want to start the exhaust again because I don't want to deafen any of my neighbors and ruin this video's audio levels. But this is my Aventador SVJ. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting rid of it. One thing I love about this car, it's an Aventador. Um, one thing I hate about this car, it's an Aventador. And that's again to do with how difficult it is to drive at times. But I love it for that. Um, over here, we have a Golf that's not mine, but it's just here. Um, I don't know why, it just appears in my videos randomly sometimes. You're probably thinking, Tommy, where's your Lamborghini Rivolta? Well, I've got a secret for you. It's um, getting the doors wrapped. Everyone was like, why aren't your doors wrapped? Why aren't your doors wrapped? They weren't wrapped because I rushed the car out for the car wow video and so I could do all my other content. So the doors are getting wrapped now and the car's getting PPF because it wasn't PPF yet. So it's not here at the moment. I also have a Hurricane Storato. My wife has a Hurricane Storato. It's her supercar. That's also not here because uh, it went to get um, like a recall done on it, like an update or whatever, and we just haven't picked it up yet. And the Urus Performante isn't here either because it's up for sale, um, but I'm gonna probably take it back because I miss it. I miss her. I love Lamborghinis. If you can't tell, I'm a Lamborghini guy, even though there's one Lamborghini here. Oh, wow. I just realized the big three, Lamborghini, Porsche, and Ferrari. I'm kind of proud of that. Uh, also, the 812 isn't here. I have an 812 Superfast. I'll insert a picture here. Uh, that's pretty much sold now, so you probably will never see it again. Uh, and for now, that's all the cars. You're probably thinking, oh, do you have any on order? What's coming? I have cars on order that are coming soon and cars that I'm in the process of buying. For example, Porsche 918, always wanted one, so that's in the process. Um, the cars that are coming soon are Ferrari Pro Sangue, uh, Ferrari uh, 12, no, Dodici Cylindri, the 812 replacement, I've expressed my interest for that. M5 Touring is on its way, another BMW, can you imagine? Obviously, I won't get these cars and keep all these cars. Some will go to, you know, make space. Uh, and I think in the immediate future, that's pretty much it. I was gonna get the Urus Hybrid, but I don't think I will now. I think I'll just stick to the Urus Performante. Um, other than that, yeah, that is pretty much my collection.